Bonjour, dear viewers, and welcome to a new edition of uh, our program Africa Today. Today, we are dedicating this episode to the uh, latest developments taking place, which is uh, the attendance of President Abdel Fattah Sisi on Wednesday for a celebration marking the birth anniversary of uh, Prophet Muhammad. Uh, Peace be upon him. Addressing the gathering, President Sisi congratulated Egyptians and the Arab and Islamic nation with the advent of this holy occasion, wishing peace, security, and prosperity for all Muslims around the world. The head of state stressed the significance of abiding by the morals and deeds of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to face challenges through continuing hard work and struggle. President Sisi called on refraining from rumors and following constructive criticism. As Egypt is leading the path of development and construction, describing the current stage as very crucial. He further called on citizens for more precise work and production, with the aim of reaching horizons of bright future for our beloved nation. This target, he stressed, necessitates Egypt contributions and state developmental efforts through national projects in various domains nationwide to continue the right path the country had already started. During the celebration, the head of state honored a number of scientists and religious figures. The celebration was attended by Minister of Religious Endowment Muhammad Mukhtar Guma, who delivered the speech and presented a copy of the Holy Quran to President Sisi. Also, the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Dr. Ahmad Al-Tayyib, addressed the gathering revealing morals and deeds of the Prophet who laid foundation of Islam. He called on Muslim nation to follow the Prophet's morals and behaviors and to refrain from wars, conflicts and crises, as well as restoring to mercy and and peace to settle conflicts. The celebration witnessed the display of a documentary film featuring how Egypt is considered the minaret of Islam. Also, religious songs were displayed during the celebration. And I wish all the Muslim world a very uh, happy anniversary uh, commemorating the anniversary of the Prophet uh, Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Our dear viewers will go to a short break and after that we'll be back to continue our segments in Africa today. تسلمت الرئاسة الدورية للاتحاد الإفريقي لعام 2019 وتتطلع كعادتها دوما للتعبير عن شواغل الشعوب الإفريقية الشقيقة الرامية لتحقيق الاستقرار والتقدم ودفع عجلة التنمية قدوم إذا كنتم ترغبون في تغيير وجه القارة الأفريقية فالاتحاد الإفريقي كقيادة تستطيع أن تعمل وتدرس بشكل مركزي لمشروع عملاق لبناء بنية أساسية على مستوى القارة أنا أتصور أن الأمن والاستقرار استثمار إذا لم تستقر هذه القارة والأمن فيها بمعدلة عالية هذا الأمر سينعكس بالسلب علينا كلنا Indeed, uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi attended the celebration of uh, Muldin Nabi at Al Manara International Conference uh, Center in New Cairo. The event was hosted by the Ministry of Religious Endowment uh, Al Awqaf and was attended by Al Azhar Grand Imam Ahmad Al Tayyib, Minister of Endowment and State and uh, Officials, as well as religious uh, scholars. 
uh, to shed the more light on this very special occasion, we are very much delighted to be joined over the phone by Dr. Asma Izzini. She is official of Foreign Relations and International Cooperation Education Development Center for Al Azhar International Students, Al Azhar Al Sharif. Uh, uh, good afternoon to you, Dr. Izzini. Good afternoon. How are you? How are you? And indeed, the happy well. anniversary uh, for Prophet uh, Muhammad uh, celebrating this very special occasion, Dr. Izzini. Uh, President Sisi delivered a speech during the celebration, which was yeah. the most important topics uh, discussed during that uh, address by the President uh, on this occasion of uh, Prophet uh, Muhammad anniversary. First of all, very happy anniversary for all Muslims celebrating all over the world yeah. the uh, anniversary of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam birth. Awesome. It's a very good tradition of Egypt to officially and privately celebrate the, oh. such occasion that the birth of the Prophet. Yeah. Uh, uh, as President Sisi attended that celebration as usually every year, uh, and uh, all the uh, big uh, Islamic figures in Egypt from Al-Azhar, from al awqa mm. from everywhere, and even some of our guests, uh, ambassadors and our guests. Um, uh, this is a very good occasion to, to shed light on the importance of this occasion for all Muslims. President Sisi uh, tackled uh, how the, this occasion should be an inspiration for all Muslims and especially for young men. Uh, during these hard times that everyone is talking about what they are suffering of challenges and everything to, to how to inspire how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam be an inspiration for every muslim that we always should uh, mm. put them in the highest position to get uh, uh, the first of all manners and deeds mm. and also mm -hmm. uh, wish the all the egyptian the egyptians to enjoy this occasion and mm. take care of their young families because families are the core of societies. Indeed. And Muslim, yes. And Muslim mm. societies, the, the family is in the core of uh, focus of, of every person in, uh, in the family. Yeah. Uh, moms and dads taking care of children. Children are respecting the elders. And uh, sh we should uh, look at these manners out of the sunnah of Muh our Prophet Muhammad yes. sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes. Uh, in his uh, speech, uh, Dr. Zaini, President Sisi, called to follow Prophet Muhammad, the peace be upon him, rules of life. How, from your point of view, to teach our children to follow the Prophet's uh, path as a model? The, the best advice how to guide young children or young at all, yes. all young uh, is to begin how to follow Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as early as possible. Begin mm. as early as possible. Yes. Once you begin, uh, all of us are telling our children that this is zaib, this is not allowed, this is uh, yeah. not accepted in our society. This is not bad. If you are going also to add that this is not accepted by Allah, this is a kind of haram, yeah. and tell him the evidence, because the Prophet tells, tell, told us so and so and so, from the very early age, he's going to, 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 to have that status in his mind that I cannot... Yeah. Sometimes if you tell him this is haram, he can make this while no one is seeing him. If you tell him that this is haram, he cannot do this because Allah is seeing him all time. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. So begin as early as possible and give an evidence from the Quran and Hadith. Yes. Uh, Dr. Zini, um, actually these um, holy days remind us of the great role Al-Azhar Institute is playing. How do you weigh here Al-Azhar role in bringing Muslims uh, Muslims in different uh, countries closer and uh, to uh, have the uh, ideas and uh, uh, of, um, of uh, peace and uh, uh, fraternity and the resentment yeah. of any sort of violence uh, yeah. to, uh, spread, to be spread among the different nations uh, uh, that Al-Azhar is uh, carrying this uh, important message. Uh, it is witnessed by all that Al-Azhar is uh, the greatest Islamic mm. figure, uh, body uh, all over the Islamic world. Mm. It is witnessed by everyone, uh, close or far. Mm. Even non-Muslims are nowadays are agreeing that Al-Azhar playing his uh, crucial role mm. in spreading the moderate uh, thought of Islam. Uh, and, and of course, the, the document of human fraternity mm. that the Grand Imam signed with the Pope 
was a great sign that uh, that Al Azhar is here. Al Azhar is at the heart of the Muslim world, feeling their fe- uh, knowing how they feel, what they are suffering from. Mm. And the Grand Imam is playing his role as uh, a sp- uh, spiritual uh, guidance for all Muslims. Uh, um, and even not only for Muslims, as I mm. told you, to, to, to the non-Muslims, the Christians and Jews and uh, all followers of religion. Mm. Uh, um, Al-Azhar is, uh, yani is usually uh, feeling the suffering people are, have, are, are, are suffering because yes. of any problem all over the world. Uh, the, the minorities all over the world. And uh, it's playing a very important role in educating and uh, playing da'wah, doing da'wah mm. for Muslims and for non-Muslims all over the world. We at Al-Azhar, at yeah. Education Development Center, I can tell you that we are yani, oh. not to spread any effort for doing whatever, improving the conditions of Muslims. However, they are here in Egypt or all over the world. Mm. I tell you that we have uh, nationalities from 137 countries, Mm-hmm. coming to Al-Azhar to study Arabic and Islamic Sharia. This yes. is the greatest proof that Al-Azhar is respected all over the world and trying his best to, to keep his role as high, as, as, as supreme as usual from the very, very long years ago. Indeed. Dr. Asma is the new official of Foreign Relations and International Cooperation Education Development Center for Al-Azhar International Students, Al-Azhar Al-Sharif. Thank you very much for being our guest for today and have a blessed day, Dr. Zini. And also, the 6th of October marks the 49th anniversary of the beginning of the war. Uh, and uh, known as Yom Kippur in Israel and the Ramadan or October War in Egypt and Syria, the events were profoundly alerted the course of the Middle East politics eventually leading to the 1979 Egyptian-Israeli uh, peace treaty. Uh, indeed, the 1973 war serves a textbook case study in the use of military means of uh, political ends and provides still other lessons for modern warfare that remains uh, fundamental today as they were uh, the last uh, 49 years ago uh, to shed more light we have the following story 49 years ago the egyptian and the syrian armies launched a surprise attack on israeli positions on the southern and eastern fronts namely in sinai and on the golan heights at 14 GMT, Saturday, 6 of October, 200 bombers flew over the Suez Canal en route to destroy Israeli positions deep in Sinai, while 4,000 pieces of the Egyptian field artillery blew away the fortifications that Israel had built along the eastern bank of the canal to prevent the Egyptian army from launching an all-out attack to regain Sinai from Israeli occupation that dated back to the Six-Day War of June 1967. In order to deter Egypt from crossing the canal, the Israelis built the Barlef line from north to south with a sand dam and fortifications and napalm tubes under the water to put the waterway of the canal on fire in case the Egyptian forces would attempt to cross. A former Israeli chief of staff had bragged that even a nuclear bomb would not destroy this defense line. Another chief of staff in Israel said afterwards that the Israeli forces would break the bones of Egyptians if they would ever dare to cross the canal and penetrate the Barlev line. The whole idea of this defense line was to deter Egypt's high command from contemplating breaching the canal and taking the fortifications on the eastern bank by force. The war was the only option available to Egypt and other Arab countries to liberate their territories from Israeli occupation as all the diplomatic attempts that would set in motion a process whereby Egypt would regain control of Sinai in return for ending the state of war with Israel and ultimately the signing of a peace treaty between the two countries failed. The war itself was a miracle in its own right regardless of the results that reflected American calculations. The truth, without the enormous American airlift to Israel during the war, Israel would have known an unprecedented defeat. In less than 10 days, the United States flew in almost 22,000 tons of armaments, munitions and 80 planes, half of which were Phantom Fighter planes. Thus, 
The Egyptian army was fighting Israel and the United States at the same time. Strategically speaking, the war proved that Arab armies were prepared and ready to wage modern wars, that they could fight Israel for days on end while not only keeping their ground but also scoring victories. The October war has proven that with sophisticated weapon systems and well-organized and well-trained armies, Arab countries were capable of inflicting heavy losses on Israel forces as well as the economy of the Israeli state. Well, our uh, dear viewers, uh, we'll leave you with this report about the celebrations uh, and uh, the 6th of October war, which is a, a day of glory and pride for all Egyptians. And I would leave you uh, with that uh, report. Uh, and many thanks for watching our dear viewers. And happy uh, 6th of October war victory. The date 6th of October this year marks 49 years on the day the Egyptian army crossed the Suez Canal eastwards into Sinai, which was then occupied by Israeli forces since Egypt's defeat in the June 1967 Six-Day War. The Israelis had the Sinai Peninsula fully under their control. They built fortifications and ramifications to secure their staying there for good. Their Barlev line was a legend of invincibility. On the west bank of the canal, Egypt's army conducted a war of attrition that at best exhausted and frustrated the troops, but achieved no real gain. The Israelis remained there on the east bank, taunting Egyptians for their incapacity and showing no signs of ever budging. On 6th of October, which coincided with the Jewish Yom Kippur, the Egyptian army stunned the world, not least Egypt itself, by crossing over the canal at noon, using water cannons to break down the Barlev line and raising the Egyptian flag on the land of Sinai. An airstrike had already neutralized Israeli air power and secured a safe canal crossing for Egyptian troops. It was a moment no Egyptian who lived then can ever forget. It marked the return of Egyptian pride, dignity and self-esteem. It was a moment when Egypt raised her head high, her six-year mortification and dishonor wiped off. The rest is now history. Following a battle of tanks in Sinai, a truce was reached between the two warring parties on the 22nd of October. A process of peace negotiation finally led to the signing of a peace treaty with Israel in 1979, which guaranteed no more war between Egypt and Israel and which returned Sinai in full to Egypt.